baseball season again. And that means that from sandlots to stadiums, the great face-off between pitcher and batter is back. And there are lots of pitches a pitcher can throw, but every pitcher is judged on their fastball. The fastball is the best pitch in the game of baseball. And that's because a heater thrown with precision is really, really hard to hit. Everyone has a fastball and it's the pitch that gets thrown the most. The very fastest throws 105 miles per hour and that can be havoc at the plate. Batting legend Ted Williams once said, hitting a fastball is the single most difficult thing to do in sports. And a home run. And he was probably right. Batters barely have time to see and swing at the ball before it reaches home plate. They should not be able to hit the damn ball, you see, is the interesting issue. And there are more and more guys throwing harder and faster. In 2008, only 18 pitchers were throwing triple-digit fastballs, and they collectively threw 196 of them. By 2017, there were 40 pitchers throwing that fast, and they together threw 1,017 fastballs at or above 100 miles per hour. The average major league pitcher throws a baseball at 90 miles per hour. At 90 miles per hour, the hitter faces a perception of 0.4 seconds to decide whether to swing or not. The angle and the speed at which the ball is released from the pitcher's hand and the spin of the ball contribute to a hitter's perception to decide whether to swing or not. It is becoming the norm for young baseball pitchers to throw 90 miles per hour in order for them to play in college or at the professional level. In this day and age, we are seeing a drastic amount of pitchers ages 15 to 18 who are able to reach this benchmark. In order for a pitcher to obtain excellent pitching velocity, they must be able to transfer a large amount of force into the baseball as quickly as possible. To create the arm speed necessary to do this, a pitcher must be able to produce a coordinated set of mechanics that efficiently generates and transfers energy from the muscles of the lower body to the trunk, to the shoulder, elbow, wrist, and finally, the baseball. The more force or energy that can be created, and perhaps more importantly, transferred, the harder a pitcher can throw a baseball. With the advancement of technology and more knowledge being discovered about the biomechanics of the pitching motion, players are now investing tons of money into strength and conditioning programs, as well as biomechanics assessments in order to get ahead of their competition. However, as more young players are able to throw a much greater velocity than ever before, they may be more susceptible to ulnar collateral ligament injuries, such as Tommy John surgery. We will discuss ulnar collateral ligament injuries, also known as UCL injuries, later in the video. The truth behind pitching mechanics. Elbow injuries plague baseball pitchers at all levels of the game. They're calling it an epidemic, saying pitchers break down more than ever. But it's really a miracle they stay healthy at all. The average professional pitcher experiences 99 newton meters of stress on the elbow with every single pitch. To put that into context, that's like hanging 55 pounds from your arm while it hangs behind you. We know that the mass of a baseball is 5 ounces, or 0.142 kilograms, and that the average baseball player's arm weight is 6.5% of their body weight. Using the average weight of a baseball player is 200 pounds, the mass of their arm is 2.95 kilograms, and the average baseball player's arm length is 0.635 meters. The ball starts at rest and ends at a velocity of 40.2 meters per second over a span of 0.25 seconds. Using this, the torque and force acting upon the arm can be calculated. First, using the relationship between the velocity, radius, and time, we can calculate the constant angular acceleration, which is 223.22 radians per second squared. The moment of inertia of the ball about the pitcher's body using these values is 0.057 kilogram meters squared. The moment of inertia of the arm about the body is 0.400 kilogram meters squared. Summing these two values, the moment of inertia of the system is 0.457 kilogram meters squared.
Now, using the calculated values of angular acceleration and inertia, the torque acting on the arm can be calculated. In this case, when a pitcher throws a ball of about 90 miles per hour, or 40.2 meters per second, a torque of 116 newton meters acts upon the arm. Using the relationship between torque, force, and the length of the player's arm, the force acting on the player is calculated to be 183 newtons. These calculations do not account for other forces and torques acting upon the arm, nor does it account for the fact that the arm moves in three dimensions. These calculations assumed a simple system where the arm moves rotationally 360 degrees in one plane. As you can see, the athlete just stirred his UCL. This injury is very painful. A UCL tear is a severe injury to the ulnar collateral ligament, which connects the ulna to the humerus in the medial elbow. The main function of the ligament is to support the arm and stabilize its movements. Ulnar collateral ligament injuries generally occur when repeating stress damages the inside of the elbow, compromising stability. This occurs in baseball, specifically during the repetitive overhead throwing motion, which can cause rupture or a slight tear. According to Metzcap, the acceleration phase of the overhead throw can cause a great amount of valgus stress to the elbow, as the forearm lays back in the external rotation and reaches maximum external rotation, valgus stress pulls the bone in the elbow apart while the UCL's function is to stabilize it. Over time, this can cause the UCL to tear and eventually rupture. During the acceleration phase, valgus stress can exceed 60 newton meters, which is a lot higher than the measured strength of the UCL in cadavers. Because of that, the valgus force will eventually overcome the tensile strength of the UCL and cause the tears. These injuries can have serious effects on the athlete's careers. UCL tears are also often referred to as Tommy John injuries, named after the famous baseball pitcher who underwent the first surgery for a UCL injury in 1974. The most common symptom of a UCL injury is pain on the inside part of the elbow, especially during the acceleration phase of throwing. Swelling and bruising may also be noticed. A sensation of popping, grinding, or clicking can sometimes be felt when throwing. An MRI is required to diagnose Tommy John injuries. Other symptoms to look for are pain on the inside of the elbow, decreased throwing ability and stability of the arm, tingling in the latter ring and pinky finger, irritation or discomfort at the ulnar nerve, loose elbow or unstable elbow. UCL sprains can be treated conservatively or surgically. Conservative treatments include rest, anti-inflammatories, physical therapy, and bracing. Physical therapy is a great source for UCL injuries because it helps strengthen the muscle surrounding the elbow. Bracing can also be considered for support of the elbow or to reduce the amount of motion the elbow can have. If there is a complete tear of the ligament, surgical intervention may be considered. The surgery is called Tommy John surgery. This repair is performed when the ligament has completely torn off the bone. This surgery is performed by making an incision on the inside part of the elbow and reattaching the ligament of the bone. Sutures are used to keep the ligament in place when reattached to the bone. A reconstruction is performed when the ligament is unable to be reattached to the bone. A ligament in your wrist called the palmaris longus is often used to replace the UCL ligament if a reconstruction is performed. Although a lot of peer-reviewed articles suggest different reasons of cause of UCL injuries, it is still relatively unknown what the primary determinant is. Active research in the field of biomechanics is still being conducted on baseball pitchers at all levels to help prevent the plague of UCL injuries. Now the I of the arm equals one-third MR squared, which equals MR squared. Yeah. <laughs>